this is an octave higher. A weekly expose of Jamaican musical talent from a unique angle. Some may even say the right angle. An octave higher pays tribute to musical heroes that you won't necessarily see behind a microphone or on the front page of an album cover, but you have been enjoying their talents and creativity over the years. Thanks for joining us as we delve into the mind and whole reason with another fine Jamaican musician. Welcome, it's time to take you an octave higher. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back to another edition of An Octave Higher. And today, we're going to be chatting with the man, Dwayne Wire Campbell, the musical maestro, the mastermind behind Bob Wire music. And I'm telling you, he is the consummate musician, producer. Listen, man, the man we are kind of hot. Wire! <laughs> Well, well, sir. A long time we've not seen a virgin. School on. About what? Long time. Long time. Long time. It's, it's about 15 years this relationship yeah. started, friends. Way back up by Hell Park. Yeah, man. Tell us what you've been doing. Well, first of all, let the world know who is Dwayne Wire Campbell <laughs> and what is your claim to fame? Music. Music. <laughs> music. Music. Straight. Music. Straight. Well, I'm from the parish of St. Mary. Belfield set me, represents straight. Love my parish, this man. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm a record producer, I'm a mixing engineer, I'm a vocalist, I'm a mastering engineer. I don't know. Carry a CD, come and we get it done. Just like that. So, yeah, that's me. And you started out your journey mm -hmm. while. Um, even though I mentioned Helsha, you actually started from Edna Manley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how, how did you even contemplate, how, why did you even contemplate going to Edna? To Ed? Oh, you know, one day I, re I remember going to this Sandra Brooks concert that changed my life. Changed my life, believe it or not. I think you probably did an interview with him already. Corey Clark. Yes. Yeah, man. I saw that man on stage playing. I was completely blown away. I said to myself, some more I learned to play. More I learned to play like that, brother. So I'm good. So I remember right after the concert, I went up to him and I said to him, what did, you, what did you do to get to this level? And he said to me, Edna Mali, man, this is final 70 Edna Mali, you're good to go, man. I'm so really? So yeah, man, by the next week, application, straight to Edna Mali. And yeah, that's it. The rest is history. The rest is history. Now fast forward to your, your work. I mean, we're, we're listening to Rhoda Isabella in the background. Mm -hmm. um, you, you're now producing for her a powerhouse singer, <laughs> but you're not limited to working with just gospel music, gospel artists and gospel yeah. musicians, are you? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not. But I do have a policy though, that I always tell myself, I have two sons that I live for. Tell myself that, you say, if I can't bring my two sons to the studio and have them listen to while I'm working, I'm not going to do the music. So for me, even though I do other music that is not gospel music, it has to Clean, family Clean. friendly. Family friendly, that's the word. Yes. Family friendly, that's the word. All right. Dwayne Wire Campbell, the man behind the music, the expression, the vocals of so many of our popular artists. Now, I want you to call some names, Wire. <laughs> Turn down road a little bit. Turn down road a little bit. Because I want you to call some names, Wire. Because a long time you know this thing, you know. And some people might be thinking that you're just a come and you don't really work with nobody. Drop some names. Are you on me, drop some? <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to start with C Sharp. <laughs> oh, yeah, C Sharp band, yeah. Well, I'm I'm, I'm keyboard player for C Sharp band from, you know, from Edna Manley again. So, St. Mary to Edna Manley, C Sharp, and the rest is history again. Yes. Yeah, man. Um, names. My God. What a swat, man. It was Robert and Geneve. And Kevin Downs were my two first clients. They were the um, beginning of the journey for me. Um, I can't remember everybody. I mean, most of the people I'm in gospel, Jeremy and Kevin Downs, most of Kevin Downs stuff. Um, I can't remember everybody. TNJ. 
Yeah, everybody from Tina and T Tina Tamara, uh, German Garden. Um, yeah, just yeah, I work with a lot of them. All right, step outside. Uh, you mentioned Rondell positive. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, during, during our chit chat earlier. Yeah, man. Uh, but step outside of the gospel fraternity. Uh, tell me some of the, the, the names. Drop some more names again. I've done to, um, productions with Jimmy Cliff, Etana. I can't remember everybody. So many people. Tifa, um, Busy Signal. I can't remember. A lot of them. A lot of them. A lot of them. A lot of them. Has it been, why, a turbulent journey for you? Or a smooth one? It's a mixture of both, to be honest with you, because, I mean, in the initial stages, man, it the rough. I remember I went to the studio at one point, and <laughs> this man looked at me and said to me, this executive producer looked at me and said to me, what is this, man? Is this me paying my money for? This is not music. I want to go and find somebody who's met the music for, I mean, that day was a, was a turning point for me. I said to myself that, you know what? I probably need to be more vigilant, vigilant to be more observant of what is going on on the radio and get me act together. Because the man literally shamed shame me and said me for come out of time studio. Packed up my keyboard and I went straight back to the inner manly college. And that day I said to myself, as long as I live, this will never happen to me again. So I went and I decided over, over time that I, I'm going to listen more, practice more, and own my craft. You know what I mean? And yeah, after a while, the client base started getting bigger. And the rest is history, as I said before. Indeed. We're having a quick conversation with our brother, Dwayne Wire Campbell, a man who is known for his quality music. The journey hasn't been easy. The journey hasn't always been smooth. But one thing is for sure, you can attest to the progress and the quality of the material that's being produced uh, even at, at this moment. We're going to take a quick break, uh, take care of some business, and then when we come back, we're going to find out the inspiration behind the man. Is it family? Is it friends? Or is it something else? Soon come back. An octave higher. Do you have a product or service to advertise? Or do you wish to become a sponsor of this program? An octave higher. Then please call the number on the screen, 876-831-3042 or email an octave higher 79 at gmail.com. We look forward to partnering with you in developing this new reality TV concept an entertaining discussion program interspersed with spontaneous, delightful performances. Why you play? What you play? Sounds real good. An octave higher. Octave higher, and with me in the spotlight today, Dwayne Wire Campbell. I'm gonna feel like more sick now than the man start <laughs> rush up the, the Kevin Downswell searching. <laughs> if it's not you, I tell you, I'm sure that was a, a memorable uh, project for you, definitely. Wire. Definitely, 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 definitely. I remember um, the first day Kevin linked me with that project. When I started from a press play, I just started smiling. Was, the journey was just fun. Actually, actually rec recorded the, the entire album in my closet. Are oh, you serious? In my closet, the whole album, my jacket, my clothes, and everything in the closet. We shift on one side, set up a microphone, and we did the entire album in a closet. In a closet? In a closet. No, no wire. I mean, just before the break, you told us about that, that one incident that defined your music, your journey. In, in, in this world of music, that executive producer who wasn't pleased with what you had to offer and gave you that opportunity uh, to, to think and to go back and, and rebrand yourself, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I remember when, during those days when I was at Edna Manny College, you know, as a musician, 
you just play what is pleasing to you or what you like and listen to, you know? So it's like, at the time, I could only reproduce what I saw fit. Yes. But I, I wasn't so vigilant, as, I wasn't so observant, I should say, as to what was being played on the radio and them. So I follow up them, so I'm a musician, I just play anything that comes to my mind. One player, one player, diminish card or whatever put in a song, I just put in a song and my own business. But at the time I realized that it was, it was more than that. It, just, it doesn't mean that it was um, dampening my talent or making me any less of a music, musician, but it just means that I had to learn to to translate all this musicianship to a regular person who don't understand this. Yeah. So that was where, I, after a while, I, you know, that was what I figured after a while. You developed the skill to interpret the other person's vision. That's it. That's yes. it. Instead of just doing what I wanted to do. Not your vision, not but their vision. vision. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes. yeah, 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 yeah. It's not you. <laughs> <laughs> I Don't tell you. It. it must have been a humbling experience. Believe me. I, went, I was locked up in my room at Edna Manley Hostel for, for, for weeks. I mean, I was there listening to other music. I was saying to myself, what am I doing wrong? I mean, I literally cry. You know? I cry like a baby, man. I said, Jano, I try, you know? I try with all my heart. And this man literally tell me, come out of my studio. What you do is not good enough. So I had to go there, I remember I set up my keyboard, I was listening to different genres of music and said, oh, so when you play the piano, oh, so you, so you add the string sweet, okay. And after a while I started to observe how keyboard players, sometimes we play strings and we just have this one note, but in reality, you're playing a violin, violin no, yes. All them little... There's texture to it. That's it. So you, so you have to learn to add all of that, all those elements. That's it. And that was what I, I, I completely owe. Um, I never said that, you know what I mean? Just, I could see just something here. No, let me ask you, man. Mm -hmm. in, in listening to other genres, um, you, you must have garnered some amount of inspiration mm -hmm. for your own expression of music. Yeah, yeah. Or, or is it that it's not just the artist that you listen to, but mm -hmm. a granny or an auntie or an uncle or a family <laughs> member? Who inspired you to pursue your dream? Well, I was growing up in a musical family. Everybody either plays an instrument or sings. I mean, everybody sings. Mother, father, there's five of us. All of us as, as siblings are singers, are vocalists. I, I grew up um, seeing my mother and father, my mother playing the acoustic guitar in the back step. My father, both of them have two acoustic guitar, singing and playing, and every day I would just sing like, what them do that? I mean, one day I took up the first time I took up my father's guitar was trying to play it. I remember mean, I tried to play the first card, I nearly broke, broke out my finger then. It was so difficult. I said, no, 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 I can't do this. But after a while, you know, it, 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 it never had to be guitar. So I realized that keyboard was much easier to play. So I started playing the keyboard and I said, okay. But it started from at home. Then I'm inspired by anything. I'd be walking on the road and a car pa pass and the picture of the arm, the sound of the arm, like, whoa. So could I use that my engine or something? And now next time, sometimes, sometimes, the music that I listen sometimes for inspiration, people believe that I'm a madman. Because this is some, some music that is not even in English. But the musical arrangement and all, placement of the instruments, um, frequencies, all them stuff, I listen to every, I get in inspiration from everywhere. Everywhere. So I, I, it's not, I can't tell you that I listen to Kirk Franklin and Kirk Franklin. I listen to every genre of music. I appreciate every one of them. I can't tell you there. I don't. I can't think of another of a genre that I don't like. I love music in general, so I listen to. I try to get inspiration from everything. My experiences, everyday encounter with everything. Indeed, indeed. I like the sound of that, man. Yeah. You know, in w with all of that, the inspiration, um, the 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 rough experience in the studio. Mm -hmm. um, when when you look back at your life, uh, um where you're coming from mm -hmm. to where you are now. Mm -hmm. um, was it a difficult journey to get to this point? Did you have challenges? A whole heap of challenges, believe me. Um, one of the, the things that I, I don't know if, if I'm allowed to even say it, but I'll say it, you know. I find that people sometimes in music in industry sometimes, especially when somebody see that you're, you're probably becoming too of a, too much of a rival. You don't get a lot of support a lot of times. You find that, I remember when, we, when I left Edna Manley, everybody was like, 
you're not a musician, I don't can play as jazz. So every time you find that you have to constantly be proving yourself to people that we can do it, we can do it. You go and start playing a reggae band, people them say, yeah, you can play keyboards, but you can't play music. And I'm like something. So over time, nobody will just hold your answer to you and say, come here, brother. This is how you do it. I remember the, I remember the first person that um, said something to me that really changed my mind again musically. His name was Glenn Brownie, a bass player. I went to rehearsal one day, and when I was at Edamani College, I, I was I trained myself to to I trained my ears so I can be here and you're singing something I don't need to touch my keyboard you just play something for me and I listen to it and I can play it back so I don't need to go and start feel it and say but I didn't just play a while ago so I trained my ears to that so I remember one day I was going to rehearse and he gave me something to learn on my way to rehearse I was like okay one six two five piano bang shuffle all right ready rehearse went inside the room and the man stopped me and said hold on what you playing I said I understand him say. Is that what you hear on the recording? I said, yeah, him, sir. Play the recording for me, for, for him, for me, please. Played it and it was there. Um, playing it again and him, sir. I said, yes, I'm going to stop. Is that what you hear on the recording? I said, yes, I don't know, me. what are you hearing that I'm not hearing? And I said, yes, you're playing a piano sound, but that's not the tone, I said. You can of go look at details still. That's what I'm saying to myself in my yes. mind. You go in a little bit. What the man was teaching me to understand that it's not because it's a piano sound, but the tone, the texture, the frequency is very important in how it affects um, affects us. Yes. I'm like, oh, okay. I remember that thing baffled me for days. So every time when I go to rehearsal after that, I make sure I find but the exact sound at the end of the record, and I realize from then certain frequencies, certain like, tones and them stuff. It's very important to how it, the whole the thing translates through the speakers. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, so apart from, you know, Glenn Brown, I'm not going to say, there are people that, uh, that encourage you along the way, but you find that most of the time people there, um, believe me, man, you get, a, you get a beating. You get a really, really bad beating sometimes. So, in, you know, but um, it's, it's not all bad. To be honest with you, because I consider myself lucky sometimes. I mean, I just started music coming to Enamali College, and the first person I started working with, somebody I listened to on the radio that inspired me so much, Robert and Jenny. I grew up, I hear them people that like, everybody know. On the radio, when I hear them something, I said, I can't believe me actually. Come to Kingston for the first time, nobody know me. And I them me and work with. So, you know, I find myself in some very fortunate positions. I remember what I was at home one day, and somebody called me that somebody, Jimmy Cliff needed somebody to produce. An album, but him just want somebody who can set up him keyboard, set up him drum machine, and just make the album. I said, okay. So I went there, and it's not like so. One of my music him here on the radio, and so whatever. When I went there, after doing the first song, this man was like, I want to work with you. I want to finish the project with you. So I just did, and I did an entire album with him. And so, yeah, I consider myself, you call it blessed, so lucky. Blessed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, blessed. Yeah, blessed. <laughs> and we're going to take a break from the blessed one right now. <laughs> and uh, take care of some more business. And when we come back, we're going to find out a little bit more about the music the man has made and how it has impacted his life to this point. And Octave Higher, soon come back. Do you have a product or service to advertise or do you wish to become a sponsor of this program an octave higher? Then please call the number on the screen 876-831-3042 or email an octave higher 79 at gmail.com. forward to partnering with you in developing this new reality TV concept an entertaining discussion program interspersed with spontaneous delightful performances why you play what you play sounds real good and octave higher Let me start that one now. Oh, yeah, man. Like a Martin Luther King would have started. Yeah! My dream, my dream, my dream, my dream. Exactly, exactly. My dream, 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 my dream
I never know, say so you didn't involve that production, the Bridget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> what a revelation, what a revelation. Welcome back to an after you hire. Wire Campbell, Dwayne Wire Campbell in the spotlight today. And we would definitely want to share more of his story with you right now. The hits, the music that you created to this point of your life, why? We want to hear more. Because you know, drop name about Etana and, and Jack Cure, and you tell me about Jimmy Cliff a while ago. No, me I hear Nesbeth talk about him dream. <laughs> no man, tell me about the thing that you would dream up and, <laughs> and create, Bridget. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, my dream, yeah. Nesbeth contacted me to do some work on the song, you know. And over, over, we have been working for a while, but him just, how am I going to say this now? He just called me one day. Nesbeth just carrying the song, come give me for work, man. Sometimes I mix some of them, sometimes I give me and tell me, do one want to play some keyboards or whatever, whatever. I'm, to be honest with you, when I got this one, this song for me is a pleasant surprise because I never expect it. I, never, I remember when I was working on the song and I finished the song, I, I remember I did this song sometime in September 2016 or something like that. I sent the song to Nesbeth and as a finished product, and it, when I sent the song to the man, I just feel because I like, yeah. I remember I was standing up at the, at the transport center one day and I see a lady pass me. I hear, pang, 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 pang. I said, hold on, I sang that. Going to J Jamaica National Bank, somebody else has paid. I'm so wait, who are going? A taxi man passed me. I said, Who are you? What is this? And I'm looking at the first time I started hearing the song all over the place. And I said, What? So, you know, um, yeah, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure and surprise as well. It was one of them songs you did. You did. And it's song nice, but you never really expect it to get the success where it gets. Still. So, indeed, yeah, indeed. yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, Nesbeth, um, uh, and my dream kind of bold you for a six because you really never that look for that kind of success. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was a huge hit, so much so that the Prime Minister danced to it after him win the election. <laughs> yeah, dream come true. <laughs> Tell me about some of the other hits, man. You, 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 you drop name like Jack Your. Um, let's see now. Kevin Donzel. Um, after, after name out this experience, Talk. if it's not you. I remember when I was in the studio working on If It's Not You. Press play, working on the song. I have to stop the song a couple of times while well, I mess it general. The song I feel like I just turn off the computer, go right at the altar church, go sit down. That song mash me up, mash me up. I remember when I finished the song, I said, Kevin, if it's not you, Hands On is my favorite song on the entire album. The same thing, if um, you make me stronger, I never you expected the success of that. Cause when I finished the song, I was like, Kevin, uh, yeah, I'm not sure still. I did it, but I don't know how to fight, I don't know how to reach. And he said, Come on, you're good, man. I couldn't believe after what I started to hear it everywhere, I said, boy, come at the songs I'm going to play in my mind. You understand? Yes. Um, other stuff like, I've done work with Etana, as I said before, Busy Signal. I have to write them down because I don't remember everybody. I'm working with Rhoda Isabella currently, German Garden song, You Are God. Yes. I did the entire production for that, all instrumentation, everything. Um, I did some stuff with German um, Edwards, DJ Nicholas. Positive from Trinidad, one of my yes. favorite artists, love him. Um, yeah, man, two man of his, a Bauer production as well. Um, Robert and Jenny have done some work with Jackier, Davil, um, all the people, I can't remember. But when you, when you call the names, you know, people, people now that associate the hit song with you just calling the name, you know. You have to drop the name of the song to wire. Tell me some you can't of the remember song. everything. Yeah, well, tell me one or two. All right, what did I say before? I said, um, uh, German and the beautiful day, hallelujah. Um, uh, positive, human army, lift the, what do you know the Notice of eviction, lift the praise up. Um, uh. Tell me about the Jacure and the Davil and the Etana. Oh, I did some work on, on um, Jacure's album. Not full production, but you know, reach a point and bring it to you, add your little flavor and do whatever uh, as well. Um, there's a song that I remember that I was involved with a lot, one of them called Show Love. Uh, the background vocals, yeah, missing a little bit too, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some background vocals and whatever overdub. I can't remember exactly what I did and everything, but them just care album come and me just work. So, you know, it's not, again, you know, a detail of all and say, yeah, man, I'm here up on a song, you know? For me, love music, me just make music. If you can't music come, get it done. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Now, Wire, 
we we almost out of time, man. But I feel like we we barely scratched the surface. True, true. For this conversation. True. Let me have to ask you. Quite recently, man. Mm -hmm. You you had a very turbulent time with your health. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, tell me about that. All right. I remember sometimes somebody sometime ago somebody said to me that. It doesn't make any sense you spend so much time working, working, working and not monitoring your health. Because you're going to find out at the end of the day, you make this bag of money and have to use the same money to get back yourself to health. Man, just me in the studio making, I mean, when I'm in the studio, I'll be here from 8 a.m. in the morning and don't go man, until the next day, 10 a.m., which is 26 hours after. Yes. And sometimes it's not intentional, but sometimes if you don't, if you don't put on your foot and stop and say, now I'm going to have to go home to my family and I have to stop now. They get so carried away because music is something that... It, 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 it consumes you. It consumes you totally, man. So, you know, I'll be here working for hours upon top of you. are not watching your diet, you're not watching anything at all. So after a while, you find say like, you will, like you have a car and you don't service it. You find say after a while, the front end start go. The, the, the engine start get mashed up because you're not changing the oil and all kind of something. So same thing happened to the body after a while now. It started getting away. I'm gonna have to stop and say, no, man, I really have to get this together. Because it's like, I mean, I'm making music every day, but it's not monitoring that, which is, which is like, which is most important. Because without health, you don't have wealth, you don't have life, you don't have nothing. There's no success without good health. You had to get control of it. I have to, I had to take control over it. Yeah, All right, so you, you are fully recovered now. You're on the road to I'm recovery. On the road to recovery. On the road to recovery. But that, has that slowed you down any? Probably physically, but not mentally. <laughs> so sometimes I'm there and I'm a woman, I'm not feeling well, laying on the bed. I'm there and like, I kick jump. I just plug up my keyboard and with the laptop and see me. While I'm on the bed, you know. Like <laughs> I'm still at music, see me. It was way down, man. So I'm physically, but not mentally, because, man, this music thing, you follow it, it runs yourself to a wreck, man. Because it never ever feels like work, you know. Yes. It never ever feels like work. It's always having fun. So even when time, you have 1,000 projects to work on, you say, Jesus, I'm stressed out, I'm tired. But it's just fun. Never ever feel like a job. So probably is that that <laughs> is going to kill myself, you know what I mean? What so. does the future hold? Apart, apart from you thinking that you might kill yourself with this music thing, <laughs> what does the future really hold for doing Wire Campbell? Sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. I mean, I, I try to branch myself out into different aspects of the music, as in... I am a, as I told you before, I'm a record producer, I'm a mix engineer, I'm an audio, engin audio engineer as well. I do a lot of stuff, but for me, my primary focus right now is, is, is to make Barboya music a reputable brand internationally. Yes. So, to completion of my studio, um, I intend to have an academy of music where I can help persons, um, younger musicians, to kind of help steer them into the correct part because I find that which is so very important I realize that you have um, primary secondary and tertiary institutions for for the academics but there's nothing for music and I find that when I was at Edna, when I was at St. Mary High School I didn't even I didn't even have the the, the proper direction and proper mentoring for say boy all right you got the music what aspect of music you want to go into do this do this and have anybody to guide you like that so you find that a lot of people are there you know i remember what was that um set me high school i always see myself setting up my keyboard and making music and getting people to sing on it but i never know what you call it i never know the proper term to call it there was nobody there careers they come up and nobody from the music industry comes to school and say, yeah man, you want to do production, you want to become a mixing engineer, you want to be whatever, this is what you do. Nobody. Because music, it's not a career. Yes. It's a little thing. You yes. get, so you get Something treated. on the side. Yeah, you get a job, you know, but you can't do music on the side. Yes. But in my head, I never, I never see it like that. I just tell myself that, boy, I don't know about mechanic work. I just want to do music with all my heart. And wherever it takes me, I mean, never tell myself I'm not dead hungry because I'm not, I'm not hungry right now. But I wanted the music. But um, so saying a lot to say that to help to steer younger musicians in the right. Cause you, you find that sometimes, I have to be honest. I may not feel shame for say this. I'm not a good person with theory, but give me anything practical, I mash it up. You give me a book to read. I can't relate. You give me that same audiobook, 
and I can tell you everything in details. So I find that there's a whole lot of people out there like that who are very good physically, but theoretically, no, them just no good. So them don't pass the exam, you have them as a dunce in a period of mind, so you don't come out and you say them go down the yard boy and all kind of something. But if you could just find a way to nurture those type of people who are, that are good technically and practically, help to nurture that. Indeed. You, you raised a very valid point, Wire, because um, there are those of us who learn uh, through the visual aspect of things, the auditory aspect of things, some who are what I'm called tactile. Don't ask me what that means, you know, <laughs> but I just hear the term. <laughs> you know? but, but different learning styles, and, and most persons are trained to, to recognize those who, who have the ability with the theoretical approach. And so we sideline those others who are hands on, who are auditory learners, you know, who are visual learners, and to, to their detriment. So kudos to you on, on that vision, man. And you don't know any support you want, and Octave Hire is here to, to put the message out there. As a matter of fact, where did that know? Yeah, the academy is coming. Bob Wire Academy. See me how you name. Why, it's been a pleasure. It's really been a pleasure sharing with you, man. Part two definitely have to come because we we'll, we we'll just scratched the tip of the, 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 the surface. True, true. Just the surface. The tip of the iceberg as I'm call it. And uh, we want to hear more about Dwayne Wire Campbell and the great work that you've been doing these many years. But thank you for letting us in. No Thank problem, you for, for just mine, man. sharing mine. some of your time with us. This yeah, man. man. My dream. Bust that next birthday again. I'm going to bust it next I tell you, this is how we sign <laughs> off with another episode of An Octave Higher. Hope you had a great time just watching this video and uh, learning a little bit more about our guest, Dwayne Wire Campbell. Until next time, it's Omar Trower's Signing off, saying see you soon. My goal, all of my goal is to reach my goal. If I have a life, put it on me headstone. Nobody no fi cry over me dead. Look at me now, when them treat me less than gold. Put me in a box like a rectangle. Oh oh, look at me now. Oh, look at me now. Oh, look at me now. I me just tell you my life. For them used to go round me, go round. No one used to come round me. My life was so lonely. Look at me now. Look at me. Now.